by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. North Korea is threatening to cancel next month's highly anticipated summit. I'm Laura Podesta in New York with more on why the sudden change of course. And law officers from around the state remember those in ranks who paid the ultimate price to keep us all safe. A look at memorial services in Deer Lodge, that's all coming up. 6.30 on this Wednesday, Shelly and Missy O'Malley with you. Our top national and international story this half hour. North Korea is threatening to cancel next month's highly anticipated summit between President Trump and Kim Jong-un if they believe the negotiations will only drive them into a corner. As CBS's Laura Podesta reports, they've already canceled one high-level meeting that was set for today. North Korea says a one-sided demand by the United States to denuclearize may force it to cancel next month's historic meeting between President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The statement targeted remarks like this one made last month by National Security Advisor John Bolton on CBS's Face the Nation. He said North Korea should quickly dismantle its nuclear arsenal as Libya did 15 years ago. But is it a requirement that Kim Jong-un agree to give away those weapons before uh, you give any kind of concession. I think that's right. I think we're looking at the Libya model of 2003-2004. The threat to the summit came just hours after North Korea abruptly canceled a meeting today with South Korean officials. The plan was to discuss the recent agreement between the two countries to reduce military tensions. South Korea's unification ministry called it regrettable. The sudden withdrawal was in response to annual combined South Korean and U.S. military drills, similar to this one conducted last year. The Pentagon calls them routine and purely defensive. They're exercises that are legal, they're planned well, well in advance. The North appeared to show goodwill last week. Three American detainees were released, and a promise was made to dismantle its nuclear site later this month. Is the summit still on? The White House says it's examining North Korea's comments. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Now, South Korea said it has no plans to stop the military drills, which lasts for two weeks. Closer to home this morning in Missoula, a break in rising flood uh, river levels is allowing some evacuated residents to briefly return to their homes. But as MTN's Connor McCauley reports, the threat of more flooding is still very real. The Clark Fork River crested at the second highest level in Missoula's history over the weekend. Water levels have dropped in the area since then, but by the end of the week, Missoula could see major flood levels strike again. We're reminding people that we have a, a small lull here, but the prediction is, is that we'll be going back up to levels that we saw last week, and that would be uh, at or slightly above what we just saw. So we're asking the people continue to, to prepare. Don't get complacent at this slow period here because we're going right back up to those uh, to those levels. Because levels have dropped, some residents have asked to get back into their homes for a variety of reasons. The sheriff's office is hoping to be as accommodating as possible in these scenarios and ask that you check in with officials before going back to homes under evacuation. One of the things that we have done is at each one of the roadblocks in the closed area, um, we're just having folks, if they want to go check out their property to stop in, we will log them in, get cell phone numbers, um, figure out how long people are wanting to be in and then kind of get them back out in a timely manner so we can we can keep track. The sheriff's office says you have the opportunity to visit your residence until around Thursday when floodwaters are expected to rise again. Also, recreation from the Reserve Street Bridge to the Kona Bridge has been closed due to dangers from downed power lines and high water levels. Also, fishing access sites have been closed to the public. Uh, we're working with Fish, Wildlife and Parks. We do currently have a closure on the access sites, the fishing access sites that are in the Missoula area. And due to this hazard, we're in communication with them uh, now about expanding that, uh, that closure and those closures. By the way, Missoula County Search and Rescue continues going door to door to check on residents in the evacuated areas. And that's the story we're gonna continue to follow here on Montana this morning. Absolutely. Not quite as soggy and wet here, but maybe I'm speaking a little too soon. Yeah, our time is coming. Is yeah. that what you're saying? No, uh, <laughs> for the most part. We're going to be talking thunder showers before it's all said and done. Right now, our uh, flooding concerns 
uh, not bad in extreme southwest Montana, but we are expecting rivers to crest as we head into the weekend uh, near or above the uh, minor flood stage for several area rivers. We'll talk more in depth about that. Temperatures right now into the 40s. Pretty nice start to the day. Do have some clouds rolling in. Indication of some moisture heading this direction. A few isolated thunder showers possible into the mid to late part of the afternoon today talk about your complete outlook, including a look at your river levels. So that's all coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. Law enforcement officers from around the state stopped in Deer Lodge yesterday to remember those who gave their lives for this difficult profession. MTN's John Amy has our story. The emotional ceremony in Deer Lodge Tuesday reminds those in law enforcement about the harsh reality of their job. Each one that are in this profession understand that today might be your last day. The law enforcement memorial service held at the old Montana State Prison commemorated the last day of Broadwater Sheriff's Deputy Mason Moore, who was shot to death during a traffic stop near Three Forks on May 16th of last year. More than 120 officers have been killed in the line of duty in Montana's history. Montana has a lot of dirt between light bulbs. Your backup is often uh, an hour away. So you learn to be uh, diplomatic. You learn to show a lot of respect, but there are people who don't show respect. There are people who set out to kill us. Deputy Moore's fellow officers were there to remember their fallen comrade. He was a, a great officer. He was a great man. He loved his family. He loved his kids. You know, he uh, was one of those guys who was willing to do anything that he could. It was just one day after last year's ceremony that Deputy Moore was killed in the line of duty. Now, the men and women of the Broadwater County Sheriff's Department said they got through that traumatic time by standing together. You know, and we just really rally around each other and make sure that no one's forgotten and, and that everyone's there. And, you know, that's how we're getting through this. You know, just takes us time. And we're rallying around each other and continuing to go forward. And appreciating the ultimate price their fellow officers paid. In Deer Lodge, John Amy, MTN News. Now, Deputy Mason Moore was also honored yesterday at the National Ceremony in Washington, D.C. In other headlines this morning, former secretary of the Montana High School Rodeo Association has been charged with embezzling some $38,000 from that organization. Alicia Lapp uh, has been charged with one count of theft by embezzlement in Beaverhead County Court. Lapp started working for the association in March of 2015. She also left to go on, uh, was let go in December of 2017. According to court documents, Lapp wrote several checks to herself. She also made several debits to the account without the association's approval. And three Billings police officers who were disciplined for having sex on city property have now been identified and one has resigned. MTN's Asia Gore has our details. A Billings police officer with a lengthy disciplinary record was the first to admit Tuesday he had sex with a civilian city employee. Officer Paul Lamantia, a nine-year department veteran, disclosed his involvement in a letter read on a Hot 101.9 radio show. An attorney for one of the other two officers later told MTN News Lamantia had sex with the woman in the city hall building while off duty. He said in the letter, quote, There is no excuse for my impulsive, ill-advised actions, and my decision to do so has caused harm to my family, friends, and department. La Mantilla was previously investigated in 2015 for assaulting a Laurel officer, disciplined in 2012 for taking a transient couple to the outskirts of town midwinter, and sued by a man injured by La Mantilla during a 2012 foot chase. The Billings City Attorney tells us La Mantilla officially resigned last week. He declined an interview but says he is focused on finding employment to support his son. Hours after La Mantilla's disclosure, the two other officers released their names through their attorneys. Officer Clint Anglin hired in 2010 and Officer Matt Edwards, employed since 2012, admit to the misconduct. Anglin and Edwards both had sex while on duty, one incident taking place in City Hall, the other in a police car. 
Those two officers indicated in letters to the Big J Show they plan to continue their work with the department and say they're dedicated to regaining the community's trust. In Billings, I'm Asia Gore, MTN News. Now, the woman that the three men had sex with was fired from the department earlier this year after she admitted stealing drugs from the police evidence room. No charges have been filed against her. Good morning to you. It is 640. We're so glad you're with us here on this Wednesday. Up next, Dr. David Parker's in the studio, and you're going to have a little chat. We're going to chat some politics uh, as well, but uh, first, uh, here's a look at what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. We're in Connecticut with the damage from deadly thunderstorms. And an update on a CBS News investigation, how insurance companies are attempting to recover nearly half a billion dollars paid to rural hospitals through allegedly fraudulent billing schemes. We'll see you at 7.